Well, let's talk about the markets here a little bit because the last couple of days have been a bit sloppy um, and the breadth has been fairly narrow. We haven't seen a lot of real broad participation in the S&P 500 itself. Um, interestingly enough, uh, yesterday, and we talked about this earlier on the show uh, in, the, in the last hour, is that the markets were able to hold this uh, previous level of support at 274. Now, at, at this 2740 level in the S&P, that was where the markets had broken above the 100-day moving average and had failed to move much higher. We actually got stuck in this trading range for about, uh, about two weeks. And stocks really wouldn't go anywhere. They go up and down, up and down, up and down every day. And we had said then that if we could break out of that trading range at 2740, we had a shot up to about 2800, exactly where the market went to uh, before we failed on this recent rally. Now, we've come back down and retested that previous resistance level. Now, that makes it support. See, that's a good thing. At the same time, the 50-day moving average has now crossed back above the 100-day moving average, which also gives more support to the market. Now, what I'm telling you is, is while it's a bunch of technical mumbo jumbo, uh, what that all means is, is that the markets are acting much more bullish here lately, although the participation has been a bit sloppy. But the, the actual underlying action of the market is improving. And after we added exposure back early in, in, Jan uh, early in May, we're now looking for an opportunity to increase that exposure one more time. But we're going to wait until the end of this week. And the reason is, is that while daily activity is fine to look at from one day to the next, that's a lot of volatility. And by looking at um, weekly moving averages, we get to see a little bit different picture emerge uh, in terms of what the markets are actually doing. This is a weekly chart that I'm showing you now. And what you can see here very clearly is, again, we have exactly the same issue where we had uh, resistance happening at the top of the market here at 2800. And the market has been unable to get above that momentarily. Now, we have a very good advance line from the bottom, but we've got this consolidating pressure on prices that's currently occurring and this channel that's getting more narrow and more narrow is keeping stock performance confined at the moment. Now, here's the reason we look at weekly data. Again, when you're looking at daily data, you got lots of stuff going on, things look pretty bullish. When you take a look at the weekly data, a different picture emerges where we have this level of resistance at 2800 if we break this, this uptrend line from earlier this year, then stocks are going to potentially retrace back down to support around 2640. So it's a, it's, a, it's a decent, it's not a great risk reward setup on a weekly basis. So what we want to see here is by the end of the week, the market continue to firm up and make potentially another charge at that 2800 level on the S&P. If we can get above that, then we got shots at old highs pretty quick, and I think the markets are going to start looking a whole lot better. Again, what we've got weighing on us right now, again, remains to be you know this, this issue with trade and what's happening um, in terms of tariffs. Uh, the administration announced on Monday, they're talking about $200 billion more in tariffs. That could be an idle threat. But the issue is nonetheless that tariffs and retaliatory tariffs you know, aren't good for exports as well, and, and they're not good for, for corporate earnings as well. So that's going to be a lot of what the markets are looking at, in particular, in trying to price out value in terms of uh, when you go to invest in something, how much is how much the value is actually going to be there. So again, all this is fine, and everything remains bullish, so you want to remain invested in, in the markets at the moment. But having a little bit of extra cash here until we kind of get through this period certainly isn't harmful at all. Um, you know, we don't have to try to capture every little move in the markets. We don't have to try to capture every little bit of upside because it's always about the management of risk. And the risk is, is something goes wrong, something unexpected happens, and we get a sharp sell-off in the markets. And, and if you're all in every hand, you know, the old uh, poker analogy, you know, being all in every hand is great until something breaks and you wind up losing all your money. So that's why sometimes having a little bit of extra cash certainly isn't harmful. It can help hedge off some of that risk. And it also gives you an opportunity by having cash to be able to buy something that becomes cheap or becomes oversold or something where there's an opportunity for you. So, you know, having cash and, and maintaining some cash here at this level until we kind of figure out what's going on 
is certainly not a bad thing. And more importantly is that if we even go back and really just kind of look at this since the beginning of the year, um, while the, the action over the last few weeks have been encouraging, the reality is is that really the markets are, are really very range bound. We haven't done a whole lot this year at all. Uh, we really just kind of have been moving up and down so far. We're in the middle of summer. We've got a lot of things weighing on the markets currently. And again, don't distract from the bigger risk on a longer term basis. When we start looking out ahead three, six, nine months, we've got the Federal Reserve raising interest rates. That's tightening monetary policy. When rates go up, the cost of borrowing goes up. When cost of borrowing goes up, well, then it's not as advantageous for companies to borrow money to do debt. And in fact, if you look at the corporate yield curve, that's now gone inverted, which says it costs more for companies to borrow than the return on investment that they're getting from the money they borrow. That's not conducive to expansion and those type of things in the corporate industry. The yield curve on the 10-year treasury is also very close to inverting and, and has been getting continually flatter. That suggests that the cost of borrowing on the short end for individuals is now pushing to the level that historically has crimped consumption. That's not great for the economy. Then, of course, you've got the Fed and the ECB also reducing liquidity through the end of the year. So the point here is, is that as we are moving forward, we are in a very late stage economic cycle. You have tightening monetary policy, and those are risks potentially to the markets that a lot of people are simply dismissing right now, but they're worth paying attention to. So the most important thing here is, is participate We you are doing that now but have a plan to manage that risk and make sure you've got a strategy that says, if something goes wrong, what am I gonna do? If you need help, be sure you go by the website, realinvestmentadvice.com, send us an email, you can schedule an appointment, need a financial plan, we can do all that for you. Simply go by the website, realinvestmentadvice.com. We'll be right back after the break. I'm your host, Lance Roberts on The Voice of Texas. Don't go away. You can get daily real investment news you can use. Delivered at the speed of the internet. Sign up for Lance's newsletter now at realinvestmentadvice.com.